incredibly proud of this group. They were part of a, uh, a big trans uh, transformative uh, time frame in the last two to three years um, with the way in which we operate day to day and how we treat each other and how we uh, work together as a unit. Um, and just some really amazing things that these young men have done together. Um, some great memories um, and I am incredibly proud of them. Um, I say this every year, this is the hardest time of the year for me. I don't, I appreciate the culmination of the year and coming to finality and everybody uh, looks forward to finishing with a great end of season performance and this year we have an opportunity to travel for another two weeks uh, overseas which is going to be fantastic. But it's the time where you know you're, you've got to say goodbye and I don't like that. Um, <laughs> so I don't ever say goodbye, it's just until the next time. Um, but what an amazing group of men these guys are. Uh, so I'd like for them to come up here, and each one of them is going to have an opportunity to uh, introduce themselves, their guests at their table that they're with, um, their family that's here, and then give a just a short, um, brief, what was their best Glee Club memory. This is one of my favorite parts of Mother's Brunch. Um, so uh, when, uh, let me call each of these guys up, and uh, you can hold your applause until I finish, and we'll recognize them as they come up. Uh, Michael Abu Amar, Aaron Corbett, Luke Everett, Ryan Guerreri, Rob Mantock, Patrick Montgomery, Trevor Peters, Adam Simpson, and Keith Vanderwally. My name is Michael Agamormar, I'm a senior from West Lafayette, Indiana, studying biochemistry. And tonight, uh, or today, I'm here with my beautiful mother, Kristen Agamormar. Um, I, I don't really have a specific memory, but um, I'd like to kind of give advice to the freshmen uh, and the seniors and say something that I've noticed actually uh, over the past couple days. Um, the more mature persons in the audience will understand what I'm trying to get at, but... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, as, as the freshmen are really starting to enter this chapter of their life uh, in, in college and their time at the university, and the seniors are leaving, um, I think it's important to understand that you should pray not for an easy time at college or in any type of situation in your career, but you should pray for a difficult time because that's what means more. Um, overcoming the hardships and dealing with the difficulties and creating memories based off of that because we don't remember time we remember moments and things happening and whether it's fear or humor we remember those moments more intimately than others um, and it's always uh, just for the freshmen and the seniors moving on um, it's infinitely more important to succumb to difficulty and adversity than it is to succumb to boredom or complacency senior from Lebanon, Indiana, and I'm graduating with agribusiness marketing. Uh, with me today is my 
uh, grandparents, Carolyn and Dave Patrick, uh, Aaron and Carolyn Everett, my brother Tyler, my sister Sally, my fiance Sarah, my parents Doug and Annette, and my sister Abby. <laughs> say one time at band camp, so I'm going to say one time in Glee Club. <laughs> I uh, paid for a haircut tip with a Starbucks gift card <laughs> and got in trouble for it, but the hairdresser loved it and she asked if I could do it again and again. <laughs> but no, really, uh, my favorite memories of Glee Club, uh, thinking back, probably San Francisco freshman year. Uh, we were really fortunate to cross the country and make that trip. It was a blast, and I uh, got to do a lot of good President's Council opportunities through that and um, throughout the years. Um, my home show two nights ago in Lebanon, couldn't have done that without my parents and all the help of my family and uh, friends at church. Uh, it was a very unique show. We took Bon and on the Poison Oaks there and um, made some memories. Uh, the, dad, the dad surprised us all and did a little... Uh, Glee Club alum quartet, and they killed it and stole the show. Uh, so, shame on them, but they were also. <laughs> But yeah, I have a quote also that I wanted to leave the young guys with um, that I got from our uh, former manager, Grant Nice, who is an uh, uh, inspiration to all of us. Um, it says, you will never see a U-Haul behind a hearse, so you can't take anything in this life with you. Uh, so just remember that, uh, enjoy your time in Glee Club, and uh, live life to the fullest while you're here. Thank you.
So, Vaughn and I was at that trip. Uh, we were sitting through their their uh, their their sound check. They were setting all their equipment up. It took a little while, so I decided to go up and help. I was the uh, producer of, of properties at the time. Um, and so I decided to go up and help. I got on the stage, and, and they were having some problems behind the risers. So I stepped up on the risers, and um, as I stepped up on the risers, it was it was a I stepped up onto the third the third riser. As I stepped up onto the risers, something happened that I hadn't expected. Um, my jeans that Bonana wears for our show, they 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 ripped. <laughs> And when I say they ripped, I mean they ripped. Uh, they ripped from my crotch to my calf. So here I was, sitting behind their risers at this point, nobody knew, uh, thinking to myself, what do I do? Uh, so what I did, the, the Perduettes got off the stage, uh, they were done with their sound check at that point, and everybody was going back to their dressing rooms. I sat up facing away uh, on, the, uh, on the risers, on the back riser, and I looked over to Scott and said, Scott, can you come here? And he came, he came to the edge of the stage, and he's like, yeah, what's up? And I go, no, 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 come here. And at this point, I had my, uh, my travel attire jacket over my lap, um, and, and Scott comes up, and I look at him, and I go, is there anything you think we could do about this? <laughs> uh, he looked at me, and uh, he goes, yes, I think, I think we can figure something out, uh, okay. And we, uh, we, uh, we quickly made a, made a plan to get a bus to Walmart, I believe, uh, where he uh, graciously got me a, a, another pair of jeans to wear for the show. Uh, so this is just one, another one of those moments where you, you really learn to take in, uh, in those lessons that you learn uh, in PMO. Just move on. <laughs> Um, 
well, my sophomore year, I, I wanted to push the limits a little bit. I shouldn't have done it, but I did. Um, and so we were we had a show in Fishers uh, at Hamilton Southeastern High School, um, and I uh, was singing the Mississippi Squirrel solo at that show. And on the way down, I was sitting on the bus. I'm like, oh, it's my high, home high school. I should do something fun for this show. What can I do? So I call my mom, um, and, I, and I say, hey, I, I need you to run to the store, and I need you to pick up uh, a stuffed squirrel. I need you to go find the squirrel and pick one up. She said, okay. So she did. She handed it to me before the show. Um, the first half goes by, and the, we were singing Mississippi Squirrel, the second song, uh, the second half of the show. And uh, so at halftime, I go and get this squirrel, and I shove it in the back uh, elastic of my, my vest. And so I got this big old hump in the back of my, in my, bed, my vest. Um, and I come on stage, we sing the first song, and then uh, it calls me down for Mississippi Squirrel. I tap down, go down, and every, you can, I heard a bunch of Snickers behind me because they could see that I had this, this something back there. Um, so I get through the first, first verse of the song, and then I pull the squirrel out, and I just start throwing it around. Well, yeah, and everyone was, was cracking up, but then I didn't know what to do with it, so I threw it to Bill. And he, he didn't know what to do with it, so he threw it to the eyes. And uh, it started being batting around like a volleyball. And, uh, and then it, it ended up going behind the risers or something. But um, So but that's probably my favorite uh, lighthearted memory that I'll have. I'll get up here and speak a little bit later. But um, never do anything without Bill knowing. Um, because, but he, he was okay with it, I think. So, um, yeah, that, that's my, my senior memory. Star, somebody gets an eye poked up by a stuffed squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Simpson. Hello, everyone. I'm Adam Simpson um, from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'm studying actuarial science. Um, I'm here today with my parents, Sam and Virginia, and my little brother, Sam. <laughs> I spent um, the last 15 minutes or so trying to decide what to say. I, uh, I think it was Friday that Patrick asked me if I knew what I was going to say, and I kind of had an idea, but I kind of also forgot that we did this. Um, so I, I have a lot to say. I could say so much, um, but I made the decision, right? That's true. Was, I, I was listening, but I was, uh, made the decision. Um, for my best memory, um, it's not, uh, as Ao said, it's not a collection. It's not, you don't remember the time, you remember the moments. Um, and it's the collection of moments that I've got to spend with my brothers. Um, before coming here, uh, Dylan, as most of you guys know, um, and Sam, obviously, uh, we weren't super close. Um, that would, it's, it's pretty, that's an understatement. Uh, <laughs> we were uh, not friends, and then we came here, and uh, we got to do something that we both love together, um, and it's through music and it's through song. That we, I got to know them uh, and, and learn about them and realize that we're like exactly the same people. Um, <laughs> that we were just little kids and didn't know how to express it, uh, and it, it was so much fun. And all of that was possible, um, and that's like the, probably the single biggest change in my life has been getting closer with them. But I don't think any of that would have been possible without all of you other guys my other brothers um, that I've realized that I've had this whole time as well. Um, specifically the new men this year, you guys have like changed my life in a way that you don't realize. Um, and I hope that I have done something for you as well. But your passion, your love, and your energy, um, never lose it. It's, it's easy to come in and you have it, and then you have that second year and things are just different. And you come in and you're a little bit relaxed and you feel like you've got this. And then um, other anxieties and pressures come in and they uh, affect you, and you guys brought it all back for me, and like made me my focus back on on what's fun about this group so much is the is the singing and it's the music. And uh, for the older guys, like I said, you guys were the the engine that allowed me to to connect with my brothers again. Uh, you opened us all up, and that's what this group does. We open up to each other. Um, we become people, and we learn how to interact with one another and be vulnerable. And it's so important, um, and it's something that you can carry through your entire life. Um, through music and just in relationships, and it, none of it could have happened without you guys. Uh, you made me laugh and smile in some of the worst times that I've ever had. Um, and I'll say the funniest moment that I've ever had, really, just quickly, to wrap this up in a good, positive way. Um, it was on the bus in Iowa, and we were there for like nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, we've been through like 14 donuts that I did. Um, just spent like, I spent like 50 bucks at that gas station. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you all know that we, were at, we got trapped in a gas 
gas station for like seven hours or whatever it was. And at about uh, hour six and a half, I look out the front of the bus. I'm like dazed. It's like three in the morning or whatever. And Decker is, is spinning, I think it's Alec, right? Has Alec on him and is spinning them around. And doing these gymnastic moves and just like loving their lives to the max. And it just, I like had to like take a breath because I, I couldn't, I was like, what are they doing? How are they doing this? It would have been so easy to be upset and mad. And they were literally like having the most fun that I ever could. And it, that's just one little bit about. Um, about what you guys do for me and what you do for each other. Uh, and I hope that you all get that as well. So. Here from here in Lafayette, Indiana. I'm here joined today by my parents, John and Robin Vanwale, and my lovely fiance, Jenna Killingbeck. <laughs> so, as I admitted to Bill and Scott over the table about 30 minutes ago, um, I wasn't super prepared, much like Adam, for speaking today. You would think that with the five years I had to get here, I would have thought something right <laughs> um, The fact that it's been very used lightheartedly a lot this year is, is my uh, five wonderful years I've gotten to spend with this group um, due to co-ops and stuff going through Purdue, as a lot of the engineers and tech majors do coming through. Um, but for me, I think what made it the hardest was I've had so many really great memories with the Glee Club trying to pick the one, as AO said, it just didn't work. So I'm going to give you like three it's short snippets. So um, first, because I couldn't miss out on the opportunity of rubbing it in the face one more time. Europe, my freshman year, was amazing. Uh, Notre Dame was awesome, and that whole trip was great. Uh, on a more sincere note, um, something that has become almost at least a weekly gathering at the Stack Pickle on Tuesdays with some of my closest friends I've ever made um, with uh, several of these guys, um, and just have, living through those memories. Um, but my favorite lighthearted memory I have through the entire time of the club, I actually told the story over the table a couple minutes ago. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure most of us have talked to you about it at some point. We do, towards the end of camp week, we kind of let loose some steam and we get to sing um, different quick, quick songs or um, attempt to tell jokes, camera typer, or... Uh, <laughs> 